Great Axe Warhammer and Great Axe Hatchet PvP Build Guide Update for Patch 1.2. This video will go over ability and mastery setups, attribute distribution, weapon and armor perks, when to run heavy, medium, or light, and then I want to talk about setting up kills post nerf. Hey everyone, I'm Barkley, and if you're new here and enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you aren't new, welcome back. Let's get into it, starting with abilities and masteries. A lot of the general passes for these weapons are mostly cookie cutter, so I'll only discuss noteworthy differences, impactful choices, and abilities. For Great Axe, I'm mainly running Charge, Maelstrom, and Gravity Well. I still think Reap is good, but as of right now, I'm not running it because it doesn't get a damage bonus from thwarting strikes, while both Charge and Maelstrom benefit from it. This build is best used in a group environment. The burst of Gravity Well, Heavy Attack, into Maelstrom has been a really good way for me to set up kills. Reap lost damage while Maelstrom got indirectly buffed, and that was enough for me to give it a try and I've been loving it since. But keep in mind, this build does lose a lot of fights with ranged when alone. I don't see a lot of builds picking up the third point in charge, but since I'm getting bonus damage with it from having grit, and I need the points, so I chose that over executioner's speed, it's been better than I expected. If I was to duel, I would drop Maelstrom for Reap if I was against a ranged setup. After the nerfs, catching good mages and rapier players is usually unrealistic, especially if you're running heavy or medium. Light armor is good at chasing and dueling range builds, but in my experience, the pros don't always outweigh the cons of light armor. But I do think it's good and very competitive in the right situation. Both builds are perfectly viable, just the first one has a slight edge for me. For Warhammer, you have two choices. The first setup is using Clear Out, Path of Destiny, and Shockwave. This has been the generic war setup for the longest, and it's a consistent, staple build. I chose not to pick the last passive swing away because it always felt like the animation is too long, and the buff starts before you can even move. I chose to put that point in quick recovery. The second setup uses Wrecking Ball instead of Clear Out. Wrecking Ball does more damage and gives you a better Fortify, and if you're in a situation where you don't want the knockback from Clear Out, this is a great choice. You could drop another passive through Power Through Pain, which does allow you to get some really big numbers, and Contemption would be my choice. I wasn't using Quick Recovery before, but with the fully charged Heavy Perks and the Lunge nerf on Great Axe, I find myself using Heavy Attacks more and more on Warhammer. The tracking of the Heavy Attacks with Hammer give it decent mobility in some situations. Now for Hatchet, I only have one build. I use Berserk, Feral Rush, and Raging Torrent. You can see I have a point in Infected Throw, which would give me a fourth ability. I just picked it up to get to the other tier of passives. The other option buffs your throws, and you can't do them with this build. As a back bar weapon, Hatchet provides survivability through Berserk and Defy Death, but keep in mind when fighting Void Gauntlets, they can remove Defy Death. You have good bursts whenever you can land Feral Rush into Raging Torrent. The sustained damage is high whenever you can land the light attacks. The issue is landing them. When taking a look at your attributes, you're aiming for 300 strength and 200 constitution. I go for 300 strength first unless I'm in heavy armor in a war. I have no points in dexterity despite Hatchet scaling with it. If Hatchet was less of a niche weapon, I would consider it. Now moving into weapon perks and armor perks, like in my other videos, I'll only go over a few of the main choices. Starting with your skill perks, the thing to keep in mind is that you don't want your skill perks on your weapons if you can afford it. For Great Axe, there's Insatiable Gravity Well, Enfeebling Maelstrom, and Crippling Reap. The mandatory ones are Insatiable Gravity Well and Enfeebling Maelstrom. Insatiable Gravity Well gives you some insane burst whenever you can land it, and Enfeebling Maelstrom reduces the damage of the people you hit with the second spin. Crippling Reap is good but not required, and most of the time I don't have Reap. For Warhammer, you have Sundering Shockwave, Leeching Path of Destiny, Penetrating Wrecking Ball, and Repulsing Clearout. The mandatory skill perks are Sundering Shockwave and Leeching Path of Destiny. AoE Rend will never be bad, and Leeching Path of Destiny giving you a potion worth of healing is pretty common. While Penetrating Wrecking Ball and Repulsing Clearout aren't mandatory, I would pick them over any of the remaining Great X perks. For Hatchet perks, you have Keen Berserk, Refreshing Raging Torrent, Energizing Feral Rush. The mandatory skill perks are Keen Berserk and Refreshing Raging Torrent. Energizing Feral Rush is really nice, but I wouldn't call it mandatory. I'm looking at your weapon perks, starting with Great X, Thwarting Strikes if you're 300 Strength, Enchanted, Keen, Keenly Empowered, Played Crits, Plagued Strikes, Refreshing Move, Keenly Fortified, and Vicious. Thwarting Strikes is amazing if you have 300 Strength. It gives you more damage than Enchanted while also increasing the damage on abilities with Crit. Vicious went down because of the nerfs to Crit damage. Keen stays high regardless of the nerfs because it doesn't compete with another perk, and it still gives you a higher chance to trigger other perks. I put Keenly Empowered over the Plague perks because of burst potential. They're still good, but I'd rather debuff perks be on my hammer. For your Warhammer perks, you have Thwarting Strikes, Trenchant Strikes, Plague Strikes, Plague Crits, Enchanted, Trenchant Rend, Keen, Refreshing Move, and Keenly Empowered. 
I like using more debuff oriented perks on my Warhammer. Shockwave and the heavy attack is a consistent combo that can apply debuffs and do really good damage without critting. Thwarting Strikes is still a pick here because Clear Out, Shockwave, and Wrecking Ball all have grit. For Hatchet perks, you have Thwarting Strikes, Enchanted, Keen, Keenly Empowered, Played Crits, Refreshing Move, Vicious, and Keenly Fortified. Hatchet perks follow the same logic that Great Axe perks do, but I just don't heavy attack with the Hatchet. So you want perks that will help you burst down people quickly. Now moving into your armor perks, you have your mandatory skill perks, resilience, aversion perks, refreshing, refreshing evasion, other skill perks, freedom, vigor, and invigorating. I've shifted my opinion on the aversion perks and currently valuing resilience higher because Void Gauntlet and Ice Gauntlet have a high crit chance and run the meta. Right now, for a lot of people, just getting a skill perk and resilience is as far as they'll go. Me personally, if I get a 600 with resilience and a skill perk, I'm not going to craft another one with hopes of getting freedom or refreshing. For your ring perks, you have keen awareness, slash damage, hardy if you're heavy or light, leeching, refreshing, and refreshing evasion. These haven't really changed much. The gap between keen awareness and slash damage is smaller, but keen awareness is a safer pick overall because a ring with it can be used with other builds. To quickly talk about refreshing versus refreshing evasion, in my opinion, they're closer than they would seem on paper. Refreshing affects both weapons and all abilities even before they're on cooldown. Where refreshing evasion in the ideal situation does provide more, if I swapped out of my Great Axe while everything was on cooldown, I get no cooldown reduction from dodging. For your earring perks, there's refreshing toast, regenerating, refreshing, refreshing evasion, purifying toast, and nimble. The first two perks give you the best health per second. Anything after that is just a preference. Cooldown reduction is the safest bet. This is pretty consistent for all melee builds. For your amulet perks, you have health, purify, divine, refreshing evasion, refreshing, fortified recovery, and empowered. My amulet perks haven't changed much either. I'm not wearing an amulet without health. This perk will give you over a thousand health with this build. Divine is a consistent survivability perk. Purify is the unsung hero that I feel like you have to be more aware of. I had to start acknowledging when I'm around 50% health to play around it and go back and watch my gameplay. I think the choice between Purify and Divine is how often do you think 10% extra healing saves you. For weapons, I'm using Opal in my Great Axe and Malachite in my Hammer, but I think Opal is fine for both. Emerald could be a viable option, but I prefer Opal. For Armor Gems, I'm using whatever combination will get me 10% physical and elemental resistance. So when deciding if you want to play heavy, medium, or light armor, understand they all have roles and are good at them. But at the core of the build, you are an AoE burst damage dealer with a good amount of utility. The armor you wear is a decision on how much survivability you want to sacrifice for mobility. The damage difference is noticeable, but it's not the bulk of the decision. The less armor you wear, the higher the skill cap. If I had the chance to practice running wars as medium, I would probably wear it all the time. But the risk is too high for the reward. I've played heavy, medium, and light a lot after the nerf, especially live on Twitch three times a week. Follow me there. Gotta get that plug in. And I don't think any of them are bad. You just play them differently. While playing heavy instead of chasing, you could turn around and peel more so you don't have to overextend. Light armor has a more in and out play style, allowing you to get in and out of situations really quickly while doing the same burst rotation you do regardless of armor, while medium armor is the best of both worlds. And on the topic of your burst rotation, your ideal situation to put out cleave damage quickly, you'll start off dropping gravity well, dodging in to spend stamina, and the third step is flexible. If you can pull off a weapon swap into hammer to sundering shockwave and back to maelstrom, more power to you. You can heavy attack, which is what I find to be the most consistent for the grit and damage reduction. I've also had success reaping people into the middle. Sometimes if I can't get into range, I've been trying to get into the habit of charging using the third perk for cleave into Maelstrom. Moving forward when doing guides like this, I'm planning on doing a follow-up video for advanced tips for each build starting with this setup. And if you stayed this long, you know I got you with the infographic. It's the least I could do. Coming back to a video to see what perks you want is time consuming. Go to my Discord or my Twitch, or you can even screenshot it here. The link for both will be in the description. The Twitch command will be on the screen. Type that in the chat and you'll get the link. And do me a favor if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions on future videos or improvements I can make. The algorithm appreciates all of it when considering what video to push. Thank you everyone. I hope you're all having a great year so far. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.